PPC experts talk all the time about how to grow sales, decrease ACOS, massage that tacos. But one thing they don't frequently talk enough about is when to lower your budgets. In this video, I will focus on eight key areas on where you can lower your campaign budgets and what scenarios you'd want to do that. My name is Stephen Pope, and I'm the founder of My Amazon Guy. Q4 this year is going to be a little bit hectic. I've been telling everybody to raise your prices and bet long on your inventory. And what I mean by that is don't give away your margin right now. When your Black Friday weekend hits, a lot of people are like, oh, you always run a promotion on Black Friday weekend, Cyber Monday, etc." This year is the exception. We're going to see more stockouts this year than we've ever seen before, which is why going to stock out is the number one reason you'd want to lower your campaign expenditure and budget. So this is a chart that shows what a stock out looks like in the Helium 10 X-ray tool. And there's many other tools that can show this. But basically, when you see the business rank disappear, so there's a time period right here the last week of December, essentially, where this rank disappears, that is a stock out on this product. And you can see uh, this sales rank over time has done quite well for itself. It's always been in the top 5,000. And then, you know, the next year shows up and then it's kind of slowly died off. And we even have a stock out here where, where the business rank disappears. So as Q4 develops, as you go through uh, your holiday uh, PPC planning, you need to make sure you have a very healthy budget so that you can cover yourself. PPC costs are up 35% this year, uh, but when you'd want to lower this down is when you can project that you're going to physically stock out, and no matter what you do, a stock out is guaranteed. Some experts think that you would be better off going out of stock at a high sales velocity. That might have been true in the pre-COVID world. But post-COVID, I feel strongly that you're better off making that margin. And so you'd be far better off going out of stock slower and eliminating some of your wasted ad budget that would just be throwing away your margin that you're going to stock out anyway for. Restock limits are also adding a major complication, which makes a stock out even more guaranteed going into Q4 when the seasonality increases and your ability to ship in has not increased with the demand. So this is the primary reason why you'd want to lower down your ad budgets. And sometimes, in some instances, you may want to even pause them altogether, especially if the stockout is guaranteed within 14 days and you can't ship any more product in. The number two area on when you'd want to lower your budget comes down to a very specific tactical allocation. If you've had 10 to 20 clicks, and zero sales on a keyword, you might want to consider pausing it to lower down your wasted ad spend. So you can go into an ad group like this one and go to the search term report and scroll through to see where some wasted ad spend is. So in this particular instance, this is for a new soap product that I just launched. Here's the soap product right here. We've been doing a lot of A-B testing on main photos to try and increase sales. And we've only got one review came in and was that you know, unfortunate four star first review because we're doing everything organically with no external support. We got a, a, a masculine scent as well as a fruity one here with some nice organic soaps. So inside of the ad group, we've got a keyword targeting with a men's focus. And in here you can see seven clicks, $23 in spend on natural soap for men. So this keyword is not doing great right off the bat. Now, there's only seven clicks. I mentioned it was somewhere between 10 and 20. You want to make this allocation call. So what can you do to make that a little bit easier? Well, you can get some ability to look at this from a broader standpoint. So I typed in the word natural here. And in here, you can see there's been $78 in spend and only one order at $16. So the word natural is upside down at a 476% ACoS. It's not a brand new product. As more reviews come in, all kinds of data could change. But it's pretty apparent that the word natural has done really poorly with only one exception with the word cold pressed doing quite well off of one click and one sale. 
Um, and you probably couldn't see that because my face in the way there. So there you go. You got one sale there off that. So when we think about turning this off, we're going to go over the negative targeting and we're going to add the word natural because we're pretty much guaranteed to not have a sale on the word natural. But if we go back to the root keyword selection, we go over to where we have the targeting set up. We're going to see that cold press did quite well. So if we look in the keywords, just to make sure we've got uh, cold press covered, we don't. So that's going to be an opportunity. And we're going to come in and we're going to type in uh, a broad match on cold pressed. So cold pressed soap. We're going to add that one in because that one did quite well for us. And we're probably going to go a little bit higher on the bid allocation here at 211 as well. So sometimes when you're looking for an opportunity to lower your ad spend, you'll also simultaneously find an opportunity to increase it at the same time. So those actions can, can feed each other. So we know the word natural was a bad fit. And if we scroll through here, we might be able to see some other um, trend lines where we've got a bunch of wasted ad spend. So, how, you know, let's take the word vegan, for example. Does the word vegan do well for us? Well, only got five clicks, probably wouldn't make a decision here. In fact, we've got two orders off vegan soap men, which is kind of interesting to see that. So the third area to make a decision to lower your budget down will come down to running ads for three months. You've advertised for three months or 90 days with a healthy budget and you can't make money. And that basically means no margin or steep competition. So this is an item that is doing well for us and we're going to continue advertising it. Uh, but it's very competitive. It's in a space with very high beauty CPC terms. And, and so as a result, we've had to taper off some of our advertising spend so it didn't get too aggressive because the margin was a challenge. We got a $50 item with a kit and a bunch of soap bars and uh, a wine tumbler in it and a card even and some lotion and a bath bomb. So it's a pretty nice little kit. It's in a nice box uh, and it has all of these aspects behind it. So it's a good product. We've, we've built out some nice A plus content. We've got all the designs in place with copy to generate clicks, et cetera. So when you have a good product and the advertising uh, doesn't get below an A cost threshold where you can make money, you have to make a tough decision. Do you turn off your ads? Hopefully not. That's usually don't want to turn ads off but you might have to lower down some budgets. Instead of spending $3.50 a click on a beauty related term like gift for her, gift for mom, you might have to just put in a cursory 75 cent bid knowing that you're only gonna get like 3% of your impressions, uh, but you might still get some sales in the door. So you could go with an aggressive culling of campaigns and pause them, that can, that can happen if you're not making a margin. Now, what you really need to do as an Amazon seller is answer this question. On a scale of zero to 10, what is your number? If one is profit at the cost of growth and 10 is growth at the cost of profit, where is your number on that scale? If you answered anything lower than five, you're seeking profit which means you're gonna make very different decisions on your ad spend. You're probably gonna be below 10% of all of your revenue generated uh, going back into advertising. Versus if you said seven or above, you're heavy on growth, and that means you're gonna be well above 11% tacos every you know 11 cents on the dollar going back into advertising on your gross revenue. So once you understand that, you might be willing to operate at a lower margin based on that, but it's really dependent on your goals. And so I would just really encourage you right now, pull out a you know, one page piece of paper and just write down your number. My number is seven and it's growth. And, and that will help you goal sets into the future, how you're gonna make some of these campaign changes. The fourth reason you wanna lower down your spend is when PPC bids are simply too high. So here's a keyword, mom gifts. The bids are ranging between 140 and 294 on the suggested uh, bids. And I ran an ACOS of 95% lifetime on this. Now, 
This was a very important keyword to me, and a lot of what I ended up doing was purposely overbidding to get keywords ranked for the broad match terms related to mom gifts. So that was my strategy. I'm very happy with my results. Not ashamed to show as an Amazon expert, I ran a 95% ACoS. I, I did it on purpose. But some of you will have high bids that aren't sustainable. So you're going you're gonna to see here, we actually have this campaign paused because we can't run it in perpetuity. We, we, we ran it as an SEO gain for about two or three months and we flipped it off. And then we tried to keep it on with like a 58 cent bid uh, for a few weeks after we ran it and it just really couldn't, couldn't do anything different. So, so here's an example of when PPC bids are too high, it's not gonna work, you're gonna have to look elsewhere uh, to get that help. Tip number five is you need to turn off your campaigns if you're out of season. Now, this is going to be the most common sense one in the list of eight that we're doing today, but it still goes without saying. If you have an item that does really well on Valentine's Day and really well on Mother's Day, but outside of those seasons just doesn't cut it, you might have a seasonal product where you need to lower your bids. So, for example, obviously, when we ran this product, we launched it uh, three weeks before Mother's Day and just absolutely crushed it during Mother's Day. But right after that, it really fell off a cliff because it's a mom gift box. It even says mom on it. And so people definitely think about this more on Mother's Day than they would, say, June 3rd, for example. On the more subtle side, tip number six is diminishing returns. So if you have a product that you've been advertising, you ran a great ACoS, you hit your 30% goal, uh, and you're like, well, what if I doubled my ad spend? Well, you double your ad spend and then you're starting to run at a 55% ACoS. That is what's called diminishing returns. So you've maximized the market at a certain level, but just throwing more money at it leads to worse results. And this is very apparent on specific niches. The smaller the niche, the more apparent diminishing returns will be present, especially if it's a non-branded keyword. If it's a brand keyword, this won't apply in any shape or form. But on non-branded keywords, if you're overspending um, for what the market can bear, you might be buying position number one or position number two on the search results at the cost of two or three times position two or three. So for example, if we take the keyword gift box for mom here, sponsor brands are at the top there. This position number one is paying probably $4.50 versus position number two paying about $3.50 and position three through seven are probably paying around two eighty dollars on this particular keyword. And so it's a very expensive to be in position one. As an advertiser, you don't need to be in position one unless you're literally the top dog in the market because you're going for market share. But if your sales are under a million dollars per year, there's almost 0% chance that you want to be in position one 24-7. You might want to do it in short-term bursts. You might want to do it to get a, a particular keyword gain. But there's very high unlikelihood that you want to be in position one all the time. You'll get better results from having uh, position three or position four and showing up somewhere else on the detail page. Maybe a, maybe a video ad has a better result for you. Um, such as something like this, where you see it come across, right? Now, there's my organic result listing right there. I show up on page one, almost at the top, about position, what is that, position six or seven, um, organically not accounting for the ads that are above it. So that was the keyword that I said I couldn't bid on in perpetuity, uh, but very much organically rank for it at the top of SERP. So it does very well for me because of that. Tip number seven on when to lower your ad budgets is when you have better results and opportunities outside of Amazon. And, and so, for example, if you're going into Google and you type in gift box for mom and you go look at the Google PPC costs and they're only a dollar, uh, they're not, but let's say they were. Or if on Etsy you can get PPC clicks for 50 cents, well, then by all means, allocate your budget wherever the opportunity is. And if you haven't done a quick audit to see how your costs or your A cost stacks up against some of these other providers, it's worth doing once in a while, maybe once or twice a year, just going through the stack of opportunity for ads. Um, now, by all means, 98% of the time, Amazon's going to win. But for those 2% cases, it's worth spending a half hour and just kind of seeing where you stand. You might find a keyword opportunity that does better off of Amazon than on Amazon 
and you might want to put that traffic towards your website or towards Amazon proper, dependingly. And tip number eight is there's better campaigns inside of Seller Central than the ones you're currently running. So for example, you're doing really well with sponsored products, but the sponsored brands are too high in the funnel and they're not doing so hot for you. So you want to take some of the budget away from sponsored brands and move it over to sponsored products. Now this, this is a case by case basis, right? If you're trying to get brand exposure, you might be willing to pay for those sponsored brand positions, but it's higher in the funnel, which means more clicks and less sales and higher cost per acquisition. The most underrated form of advertising right now is either sponsored video ads, which are under the sponsored brands dropdown, or in sponsored display. Inside of sponsored display, you have the opportunity to do some campaign targeting in various ways that you may or may not know exist because there's some new offerings that have been coming out. Not only can you do the same thing you do in sponsored products with product targeting, you also have audience targeting which you could do remarketing, searches, and purchases, which can follow consumers outside of the Amazon ecosystem. So you need to double check to see how you're doing in that um, and test some of these audiences. So maybe you do really well with an audience for a first time home buyer because you sell a product that somebody would, would need when they move into their new house or in the first year of owning a home. There's various different types of Amazon audiences. We're seeing very much that Amazon's trying to gain some ground against Facebook and all of the demographic targeting that, that are available there. So those are my eight tips today. I do have a couple of bonus things. Um, so stick with me for another minute or two. Um, here's a couple of reasons why ads don't display. Tip number one is ban product from ads. So uh, for example, if you sell a fat burner, that category is flat out banned from advertising. And that's not the friendliest category to launch if it's your first time product. I would avoid that one entirely. For those that have followed my channel at YouTube, youtube.com slash my Amazon guy, you guys have seen me talk about this particular product. This was my number one seller. I made a killing on this product and it got banned from advertising in the middle of February. And I tried for months to get this product unbanned from ads. I did everything from redoing the title, the, the bullet points, the A-plus content, could not get them to get it unbanned. Turns out it was the word drinking flat on the glass. Uh, we thought for a while it was the term social distancing, but it ended up being the word drinking. So there's certain keywords or words that are, if they're present on your product, for example, if it's, if it's a swear word, you got an F word on your product, they will ban that from advertising and not let you display it. And then finally, if your keywords are not relevant, they may not display for keywords um, or, or for some of the advertising that you're seeking. Uh, so if you sell a product like a laundry hamper, but the word basket doesn't do well for your product, Amazon is going to take those keywords and diminish their presence inside of the ecosystem, and you're going to get less of your ads displaying. So you got to be aware of some of the gimmicks or some of the techniques to get around some of these challenges. you got to choose the right products depending on how you're going to be able to cope in the Amazon ecosystem and make sure you understand some of these recommendations to lower your ad spend where it's not doing as well so you can reallocate it to better performing portions of your portfolio. My name is Stephen Pope. I'm the founder of My Amazon Guy. For more tips and videos like the one you watched today, go over to youtube.com slash myamazonguy and hit the subscribe button. We'd love for you to leave a comment on, on any of our video content to ask us about your own particular situations. It's my way of giving back to the community because I strongly believe that it's us against Amazon, not us against one seller to another or me against another agency. I give away all of my tips for free. Giving back to the community is, is my way of, of trying to generate my own business. I know that if I give you guys all my best stuff over time, a small portion of you will end up paying us for our own services at myamazonguy.com, which we are a full service Amazon agency. We do everything we can to grow sales on your account. Uh, and I have a graphic that summarizes everything we do at my Amazon guy catalog and design is, is your conversion elements, PPC and SEO. Those are your traffic. If you do this thing and it's a cycle, we always keep working on these four things. It leads to traffic conversion and sales. So hopefully you enjoyed our, our tips today and you definitely want to check out 
all of the other video content that's coming out on the PPC Mastery Summit uh, with Kevin Sanderson. Can't recommend it enough. He always puts out great content and a great conference, and I'm glad you guys watched today's video.